Hey, Fero fam. I just wanted to say, you know, if you like the content that we produce, please give us a like, subscribe, and also click that bell button because it really, really helps the channel grow and more people know about Fero. Network layer privacy is another important component in you know, preserving the privacy of your financial transactions. While Firo's you know, privacy protocols like Lelantis or Lelantis Spark hide things on the blockchain, that means you know, when you're looking up the blockchain, you can't actually get the data from it. Like You don't know who the sender is, the receiver and amounts. There are certain metadata that can come from the network layer. And this is what, because like, for example, if you make a transaction and somehow someone who is actively monitoring the network can tie that particular transaction to an IP address, that's really bad, right? Because that kind of removes a lot of the privacy that you gain from hiding stuff on the blockchain. So Firo has to not only solve blockchain privacy, but also network layer privacy. Before we go into how Dandelion++ works, I think it's important to cover how existing cryptocurrencies that may not have a privacy focus uh, do their you know, transaction propagation. And how that works is that when I make a transaction, I basically broadcast it to you know, all the other peers that, that see me. And this is what we call a gossip protocol. I'm telling everyone about my transaction that is near me. And in, in turn, you know, those other um, nodes that receive your transaction, they also gossip, right? So it's like, okay, let's say I broadcast to eight people my transaction, and then that person broadcast to eight people that are close to them or nodes that are close to them. <clears throat> now you may think, well, you know, how do I determine the source? But if a very sophisticated attacker is monitoring the network, he can see how the transaction propagates. It's kind of like when you drop a stone into a pond, you can see the ripples propagate. And just from seeing the ripples, you can kind of guess where that transaction originated from. So the same principle kind of applies to normal, I would say, transaction propagation methods in cryptocurrencies. Dandelion++ works by instead of telling everyone about your transaction the moment that you broadcast it, what instead is that it would, trans it would send that transaction to one other node first. So that means the whole network is not aware of it, only that one other node is aware of it. Once that node receives it, instead of telling everyone immediately, it actually rolls a dice. So let's say there's a 10% chance that you will tell everyone and a 90% chance that you will tell one other node instead. So that works like instead of like, you know, one node going broadcasting to everything, it goes one node tells one other node. It rolls a dice. If it's a 10% chance, it will broadcast to everybody. But if it's a 90% chance, it will broadcast to only one other node. So that means, let's say if it broadcasts to one node, one node, one node, maybe at that point in time, only three nodes are aware of your transaction and are unsure, you know, did this come from where, which one was the originating node, right? Because if A transacts to B and B sends to C, C doesn't necessarily know whether B was the original node that started the transaction or were there previous nodes before that. So it's this kind of obfuscation to show that, well, you know, how many nodes are behind me? Where is this original transaction coming from? To even further make things more complicated is that once, let's say, someone, one of the nodes then hits that 10% dice chance to broadcast to everyone. Once that broadcast happens, the other nodes that were previously in stealth mode detect that broadcast and then broadcast the transaction itself. So it becomes like, you know, it wildly propagates from different areas. So it's kind of like back to that pawn anal analogy. Instead of seeing like one rock drop in and the rippers flow in, when one when one other node detects the rippers from this particular transaction, all of them start kind of broadcasting. So it's like rippers coming from different parts of the pawn. So I guess that's a, an easy way to explain how you know, Dandelion++ works. And the reason why it's called Dandelion is that when it's going through like that stealthy phase where it's only broadcasting to one other node, it's what we call the stem phase. And when it starts you know, 
gossiping and telling everyone. It's called the fluffy. It's kind of like, you know, the little stuff of dandelion flying here and there. So this is a really good a way to, you know, protect network privacy to hide your IP address so that, you know, you don't need to use a VPN, you don't need to use Tor, and you still get a really good level of privacy. Obviously that, you know, you can still use a VPN, you can still use a Tor to have additional network privacy, but, you know, even without it, you are getting a very high level. While Dandelion offers really good privacy from, I would say, casual observers or even, I would say, like a determined, you know, hacker or something like that, it may not protect you against, I would say, state-level actors, someone like, you know, the US NSA, right? And to give that level of protection, you would need to do something even more, which is what we call use the use of mixed nets. Uh, we are already looking into the implementation of mixed nets into Firo, uh, in particular Meson mixed net, and we hope to give you more updates soon in you know how we are going to further improve our network layer privacy even from the most advanced actors who may want to de-anonymize you.